two products that could help your putting, help you improve your scores. One of them, it's going to be very player specific, which is the Golf Pride Grip. I'm trying these new reverse taper Golf Pride putting grips, which we'll talk about. And to test them, not only have I got some really tough greens here in Spain that I'm on, but also I've bought the Y putting thing. It's called the Y putting thing. Now, if you're interested in the Y putting thing, and you like what it does, and you feel it can help your putting, there is a code coming up here, which you can use, link down below all of this code to get the best price for that device. Let's show you the grip and the putting thing. Yep, it's a putting thing. So the Golf Pride grip, this is a reverse taper. I've tried this in the UK and now out here in Spain. It's kind of staying on my, on my putter. I am really starting to fall in love with it. Basically, it's thicker down this end than it is this end. Um, which allows you to maybe, and it's player specific, like I said at the start, get some kind of continuity between which hand is pushing and pulling at what time. So I thought to test that, we'll come and test it on the greens and show you a few putts. And what happens when you do putt with this grip is it definitely gives you more awareness of, for me, the bottom hand, for someone who has tended to be a little bit, when I've putted, when I've measured on um, hack motion device I use, it's shown that I can get a little bit this way with my putter. So a little bit bent in this wrist, a little too much a lead wrist kind of straightening off. And then I pull the putter through, resulting in some pushes. Where I've actually been practicing recently moving the putter to me, feeling like this is going more all together rather than this end overtaking this end so much, which is what I measured as seeing uh, happening with my stroke. And this grip gives me a greater feeling of that. Now, does it make me do that? Well, no, it doesn't fix my fault. To be fair, what fixed my fault was measuring and becoming aware of my fault, and I can fix it with any putting grip I feel. So meaning more my application of four over any putting grip can allow me to fix on measured data when I test it on hack motion, my putting stroke to even out how I deliver the club and how much wrist I put in. Does this grip allow me to feel my putting stroke in a different way? Absolutely. Does it dial in with what I want to feel at the moment based on some measured facts? Absolutely. So for me, it's the feel that it's given me around what I'm trying to achieve that I think really makes me feel quite different. But let's be quite clear here. I am big enough and brave enough to know that the putting grip is not going to fix me. It's going to help me gain a feel that I want. And the same next student isn't going to feel it. So it is a case of you picking one up and really trying to see if this idea of thicker down the bottom to thick thinner at the top actually can allow you to control that better. And that is where the putting thing comes in because that's gonna measure a few aspects of my stroke so we can see, is it any better? So let's kick it off by showing you what this is. It's got little spikes on the bottom here which you, allows you to put it on the green or your carpet at home and it's gonna stay put. We've got two holes here and two at the front here if you wanted to put tees in the ground to keep it super, super secure. Then we have these dialing numbered, funny shaped two twisters at the front and at the back. So the ones at the back are there to allow you to try and get your putter through the 2T Tiger Woods gate, if you imagine. And the reason this is super clever is that all putters are different shapes and sizes. So not only does one device allow you to move it in for small heads, move out to say a one for big heads, so it gives a bigger gap than the six, which is a narrow gap. It also, you can promote a six on one side and a three on the other, subject again to your putter shape or strike patterns that you're trying to push. Like if you always hit it out the toe or out the heel, you could push the impact more to one side by having more pushed in here than out there. Super, super clever. And what do we get at the front? We get the same idea in these numbered twirlers, um, goes from zero to four, four basically being a gate. It's a gate and in effect a putting mirror, which I'll show you coming from the two parts inside, um, all in one, just one thing, this is it. The only bit that comes off is this black bit. It's got two purposes. One, it allows you to aim up the Y golf putting thing. It's called the putting thing. 
So you can use this to aim up, which we'll show you. And two, wait to the end. I've got a surprise. This has got an also super clever purpose, which we'll show you at the end. So number one, let me set my putter on and I'm just going to move. I'm around a two and a two for both of these. I've got quite a long headed putter. That does create quite a, a snug gap. So I'm going to make that a little easier, a one and a one, because that's not the bit I'm too worried about. The bit I want to improve is my start direction. So I'm going to go all out to test this grip. That is a four in front of me. And you can see I'm not putting at anything. I'm literally just going to try and start the ball through the gate. Like that. Yes, please. Now, when I've done this at home and in other situations, you're going to see the four which I've got here. I'm actually getting better and better with the four because I've practiced a little bit for all the video and working out how to use the device and to test my new grip, which definitely allows me to feel like I am presenting the putter face in a much more consistent spot. You saw each one of those got through. Normally the fours I do, I hit the outside or the inside one, depending on how I'm releasing that putter. So by setting that gate up, which is always out in front of you, practicing start direction, where you can imagine I've not done that towards any target. I've just hit that out at any distance in front of me. You can do that at home. You don't need to be on the green. You don't need a hole. You can now start practicing that face delivery, which is going to really influence where that ball starts by literally having the gate set up, ready to go just on one unit that you put down. That's smart. So on the putting thing, we have a little rubber part here which keeps the putter from sliding, grips it at address. We have a face line up line here, which is great. Obviously, we've talked about the curly whirlies. Now, we've also got these two lines either side of the ball. Because I know what lots of you are saying. It's not a mirror. You said it's a mirror. I like mirrors. Mirrors make lots of sense. Well, this is a mirror if you want to work out eye line over the ball, which is where you would use a mirror for. Not for alignment, not going to work out for that, but for eye line, it does have a mirror function. So what you're going to see, the more I move over the ball, the more you see the two black lines. The more I move away from the ball, more the outside black line disappears. The more I move my eyes ahead of the ball, the more that line's going to disappear. So basically, if you want to get your eyes over the ball, you're going to see these two black lines evenly. I like to have my eye line about the neck of the putter, which means this one slightly, the ball just slightly cuts over that black line. So it's giving me my face angle, my gates for my putter, and I can move them subject to the putter shape, so it fits all shapes. My gates for the start direction, as well as eye line for where I want my eye line to be as well. Let's try and hit a slightly longer putt. Can I still start it online? Yes. I honestly feel, and it's a feeling, because you're going to see me change grip again in my life. No worries about that. Like my putter grip will change. Um, at the moment, the reverse taper, I am getting more through this four and four gate than I've ever got through other gates, which are small. Like I've used the, um, this is probably the equivalent to a small putt out gate which I've used lots and I struggle to get it through there as consistently as I am at the minute. Yes, please. Now, let's set it up towards a hole. So setting it up towards a hole is super easy because it comes with this little black insert, which is basically an alignment aid. So I've just popped it down on the ground. Let me aim it relatively straight, right edge maybe. I might be wrong there. Basically, wherever I hit that, yeah, that stayed at right edge. This now is fixed. That basically is where that line will be. So I can simply take that away and I'm now ready to go. I've set my uh, aid up. I've put the two pins in the ground just to keep it steady. And now I'm basically practicing start line and a little bit of break. Now that was firmer and it went up the hill. So let me try that again. That should go, yeah. So as I hit it first one slightly through the break, up a very slight or steep slope here. The other two more similar pace, they took the slight break and went in. I mean, I would be able to get on a putting green 
I can work on start direction, I can work on club, I could work on how good I am at seeing start directions by using that alignment aid. So you could get on different brake putts, set that up. It's only going to go straight out of this and you're going to be able to say, look, I, I thought it was there and it's nowhere near there. I honestly think I've got this one aimed slightly too far right side, to be fair, for it to go in consistently. Oh, no, it's good. It's good. It's super low to the ground. It's a very thin piece of kind of metal which allows me to not feel like I'm way off the ground. Yeah, that one, if you get it starting slightly right, it doesn't go. So I'm gonna bring my start direction in as well. So anything coming out of that gate, slightly right, isn't going in. Yeah, look, I hit the left hand one there. Brilliant, it's so good for helping you really start to try and identify patterns in your stroke, patterns in your setup, patterns in your putting that you can try and make more consistent. And did you see how quick and easy that was for me to get a gate down there? Like as soon as that, I was not hitting it in, even on the thing, I, and it's called the thing, I gave me myself those start direction gates and bang, I'm in the middle. So we got the rail here to set it up for lie. Now this also does something else. Remember, if you're liking the putting thing, use my code, get the best discount, links down below as well. So what I'm gonna do is find the flattish part of the green, which is around here. And I'm gonna take the black thing, which has numbers on this side, and I'm gonna flip it upside down where there are basically these two little ridges here. And I'm gonna place the ball on those ridges and I'm literally just gonna pick this up until the ball rolls out. And then what happens is I'm gonna flip this over and there's numbers on this side and the measurement is giving me between nine and 10. This is basically now, it's a stint meter. Now I'm not gonna hang my hat on it being the most accurate stint meter on the planet, but it gives me an idea of the stint where I wouldn't be able to tell you what the number is, which we'll talk about why that's important in a second. Just best practices when you're doing this. I'm now going to do this the other way. So going now back the way I was going. And that's now gone beyond a 12. So I'm basically rolling that uphill. So the first one was uphill, the second one downhill, meaning we're getting a different reading. So I can do two things. I can go off and find a flatter spot. There aren't many flat spots here by the seaside and it's quite slopey. These greens are amazingly uh, complex. Or I can think, I would guess these are around a 10. I'm gonna put them at around a 10 on the stim. They were just over 12 and then under nine or just around nine on the slight upslope. I reckon a 10, 10 and a half, maybe even 11. Now I can hear you, lots of you are basically saying, well, why is that important? Why do you need to know the stim? Well, a few reasons. One reason, if you're playing and using, oh, ha, ha. Yeah, I'm back on my fours, my grip's failing already, is it? If you're using any green books, if you're using any kind of feet to measure the ground for the slope, you're using aim point ideas, understanding the stimp will tell you how far your fingers should go. And obviously if you're using green books, you need to understand the stimp to know how far to aim for the said slope that the book's giving you. Other reason as well, I did a review recently, which has been very popular. Oh, on the left again. With Xpart, Xpart is a home sim. Check out the video. I'll pop up a link at the end of this video. Um, it's a home sim where you can practice your putting indoors at home. If you don't know the stimp on that one, I hit the left down one again. Um, on that putting simulator, you can set the simp. So you can putt at home and simulate how fast the greens are. If you don't know how fast your greens are at home, then basically how are you ever really gonna do that realistic practice? Having a device that allows you to understand a stimp isn't gonna to appeal to all of you, totally get that. But for some of you, it absolutely is gonna be a golden ticket for using the other devices you use to help you on the greens. What do you think? Would you change your putter grip? Do you like the idea of the reverse taper? I do like that thicker at the bottom grip and the putting thing, I'm absolutely loving it. Putting thing as the name I think is a fail. We need a better name than that. What do you reckon would be a better name in the comments down below? If you want to find out about X putt and what I was talking about with that, here's that video. It's unbelievable. Indoor sim for putting. Yep, you heard me.